Hi everybody, Sam from Oval Renewables and welcome to part three of our North Ferriby project. If you haven't seen part one and two, then go and check them out. They're already out on our YouTube. But for part three, we're going to be focusing on the My Energy Zappy and how that all works with the solar and the battery system that we've got on this project. So let's dive into it. So, anyone that has seen any of our other videos or follows us on any of our social medias knows how much we love the My Energy Zappy. And so this one was actually already installed on this project, but of course it didn't have the integration with the new solar that we fitted and also the battery that we also fitted. So we've had to make some slight adjustments to this system to give the customer the full functionality on their app, which we'll take you through the app in a little while. But this is the seven kilowatt white tethered unit. So it's got a type two plug, on here and it's got six and a half meters of cable so this customer parks his tesla basically where i'm stood so it's absolutely perfect for that we've then got this little display on the mind you zappy we've got how much the solar is producing and now that we've installed new solar as well as the existing being already here that is a, an accumulation of both solar pv systems so we haven't got this is how much one is this is how much the other's doing it's just both together we've then got what the home is actually consuming which is 3.2 kilowatts and that will also be what the battery is doing so on this little screen it doesn't differentiate between the home and the battery but we can see that the home is consuming 3.1 kilowatts and the grid is doing nothing so there's no import or export or anything from that um, so the battery will more than likely be charging at this point. We've then got date and time and how many kilowatt hours have been put into the car uh, during the last charging session. Nothing's been put into the car at this point. The charger must not have been used fairly recently. We're also in stop mode here, so the, the car's not going to do anything um, if it's plugged in until that mode is changed. We've then got the buttons here. We've got menu, up, down and enter or plus. And so we can change a few things there by using these buttons. We've actually got a little a leaf symbol here as well and that means that out of the charge that has just happened how what percentage of that charge has been done via green means so basically what percentage of that charge has come from the solar pv so that's that's pretty cool as well to see how much of that charge you've actually self-produced if we change the modes we've got fast mode which is going to charge the vehicle up as it says, as fast as possible. Seven kilowatts is the maximum this charger can send into the vehicle, and that will just drag power from everywhere. That'll come from the battery, from the solar, from the grid, anything it needs to do to, to deliver the amount of kilowatts that that car wants. So it's the car that always has the final say, but this charger has the potential to divert up to seven kilowatts of energy into that car. If we then go to eco mode, that's a bit of a, a halfway house between fast mode and eco plus mode. So it will start to trickle charge the car with 1.4 kilowatts of power, which is the key number. The car can only charge with a minimum of 1.4 kilowatts. As the solar then comes out and hopefully has an abundance of surplus, if it has 1.4 kilowatts of surplus or above, the car will start to charge up with anything higher than 1.4 kilowatts. So let's take the example of the solar is producing loads of power. The customer has got two kilowatts of surplus power going back to the grid. The customer wants the car to charge before the battery. Then the Zappi will go, okay, there's two kilowatts going back to the grid. I will divert two kilowatts into the car. In reality, is this charger with um, a domestic solar PV system going to charge the car from zero to 100%? Probably not. A lot of vehicles have 60 to 80 kilowatt hour batteries, even 100 kilowatt hour batteries. And so that's a lot of power to deliver, but it will make a mark in it. So if you can send 10 kilowatt hours into the vehicle, then it's made a difference and that power has gone somewhere. It's not gone back to the grid, so you're making use of it. The greenest charge is Eco Plus mode. That's where you can set a percentage green level. So for example, if you only wanted to ever charge your car up from uh, surplus solar PV, then you can set that green level to 100% and that'll mean that if you plug the car in, the car needs charge, but there's not enough solar PV to charge that vehicle up so effectively there's 1.4 or below of surplus then the car will sit there not charging if there's above 1.4 kilowatts of surplus the car will start to charge so that's that's the greenest charge obviously because it's it's working purely from solar but realistically that's going to be used more in the summertime when we're producing more power 
And so they're the modes. We're back around to stop mode, which just means that everything stops, the car doesn't charge, and the, the Zappi has blocked the car from charging for whatever reason. You can change all those modes as well and alter all the settings for the modes via the app which the customer has and we'll run through shortly. Um, but that's basically the Zappi in a nutshell. You can have the black version, which comes with a black plug and black outer frame. You can also have the white or the black version, but without the tethered lead. You can have it untethered. And basically where this holster is, there's a type two plug, which allows you to plug your lead in that has probably come with your car. That's quite handy if your car needs to be a little bit further away from the charger than six and a half meters, because you can buy a 10 meter lead, which will give you that little extra length. But that's basically the Zappi in a nutshell. I'll show you how we've connected it into the system to work alongside another charger that this customer has. So this is the way that we've connected the Zappi into this home's um, energy supply. So what we've got is we've got a supply coming from the home's consumer unit comes down this piece of conduit into this transfer switch. It then comes out of this transfer switch to supply the Zappi, but we've also got an AIM and EV charger on the front of the property. The reason that we've had to install this transfer switch is because this home hasn't got enough capacity to run both chargers at the same time. Now, we could apply for a larger supply and all the rest of it, but this house is pretty much at maximum. It's got the solar, the batteries, it's got a little heat pump as well, and it's got two chargers. So we were very conscious that we didn't want to overload the system. And the customer's only got one EV. He quite liked the idea of us being able to isolate the one that's outside, and so that if he's got a guest that needs to charge the electric vehicle, he can transfer this switch over to the AIM and EV charger, and that will energize the AIM and EV outside. But for most of its life, that charger outside will be dead until it's needed, and we can change that in here. So all that happens, we're in, currently in position one on this uh, transfer switch, and that is labeled up Zappi. So all that does is it allows, allows the power from the consume unit through the 32 amp MCB, through this transfer switch and out to the Zappi. If we wanted to turn both chargers off, we would go to mid position. Now the Zappi and the AIM and EV charger are both dead. If we put it over to transfer position number two, the AIM and EV charger will energize and now the Zappi's dead, but the AIM and is live. But for like I say, for most of its life, we transfer over to the Zappi and you can hear the Zappi just starting up now. The other reason that we've, we've done this is um, it allows flexibility so that the customer can turn off both chargers without having to turn anything off in the fuse board, which is also also benefit. But these are mainly for transfer switches for generators, for off-grid systems and things. But for us, these work perfectly. And so if you don't have the capacity, we'll just mechanically separate the chargers so that you can just have one charger on at a time and that's enough to satisfy the DNO requirements. So that's why we've done that and we've kept everything neat and we've put our cabling back into our trunking that we've used for the battery and the solar install. So, like I mentioned, we had to make some alterations to this system to allow it to work with the new solar that we installed, the battery that we installed, and make sure it's all integrated correctly with the old solar. Now, the way we do that is we need CT clamps. So, I mentioned in a previous video about CT clamps with the Tesla. We've also added some of those for the My Energy Kit. So, within this gateway, we've got the Tesla battery circuit, we've then got both of the solar PV circuits. So that's actually quite handy for us to monitor everything in one place. So we've got a CT clamp that monitors both the solars. So we've actually got one CT clamp that monitors those two. We've then got a second CT clamp that monitors if the battery is charging or discharging and puts that onto the app. And then the third CT clamp goes at the main meter position. So I'll show you that one in a sec. But that one monitors what's happening with the grid. So if the grid is buying power in to supply this house, or if the grid is exporting power from the solar and the, possibly the battery, depending on, on how it's all set up. But yeah, all of our CT clamps, apart from the grid one, is in here. Um, so yeah, I will show you the grid CT clamp next. So we're out of the meter box now, and I'll show you quickly what this CT clamp looks like from the Zappi. So this CT clamp is monitoring what's happening with the grid, so if it's importing or exporting power. So we'll have a little look at this now. Um, so this is this is what it looks like, it's nothing, uh, nothing too scary. This just clamps around the main incoming supply from the grid, 
and it's facing back into the house so any power that is coming that way is a positive and any power going that way is a negative it feeds that information through this cable here which goes back to the zappy and then the zappy then knows what's happening with the grid so there's another one of these around the two solar pv circuits and another one around the battery circuit all doing the same job just monitoring current flow and then we set up which input within the zappy is monitoring grid which input is monitoring battery and then the zappy knows what information it is receiving to which part what piece of equipment that relates to so yeah that is our ct clamp for the grid that's how we've integrated the mind your zappy to monitor the solar the battery the grid and everything else so let's have a look at what the customer actually gets the physical app because let's face it that's what we look at day in day out we don't come out here to look at what the battery is doing the solar we look at everything on our apps so let's have a little look and i'll take you through some of the basic information that the the zappy app or the mind your app shows you okay so now let's have a look at the my energy app we've borrowed the customer's phone and uh, this is the app that the customer can see and the one that they interact with so we can see right bang in the middle we've got a hundred percent green so that's depicted by the green little leaf there and that means that this home is currently operating without buying anything in from the grid so it's kind of self-sufficient so if we start right at the top of this we can see there that the home is currently using 1.5 kilowatts of power so that might be through the appliances that are going, there might be a wash on, uh, the lights that are on and, and everything like that. That is showing us that the home is using 1.4 kilowatts. We then move towards the right hand side, we've got a little pylon. If I click on that, that then gives us the amount of imported energy today. So we can see there at the top right, we've got today, yesterday, this week, last week and all the rest of it. So if you have a look at yesterday, so that shows us there that yesterday this home imported 29.6 kilowatt hours and only exported 0.1 kilowatt hours. So that's important because we don't want to waste any of this solar if we can help it, certainly at this time of year during the winter uh, and the duller months of the year. This imported power we can see on the graph has actually happened mainly in the early hours of the morning so that indicates to me that this car was set to charge up during those times and possibly the battery as well that even though that is imported power that is probably at a reduced rate say 5 6p something like that so even though it's imported it's not necessarily a bad thing so if we go back out to the home screen we then click on the solar we can see the solar um, is producing three kilowatts and that's the combined solar so that is both the new and the old system we click on that that will load up how this solar has been producing. So we can see there it started to form this nice arc of generation and it is, it's peaking at the minute because we're kind of at the middle of the day. So it's start now to steadily come back down to uh, until it turns off later on this evening. But we can see again in the top right, we have selected today. That means that it's showing us cumulatively what both systems have produced today. So they have collectively produced 10.2 kilowatt hours of energy. If we have a look at yesterday, it was a little bit worse yesterday, so they've only produced 4.1 kilowatt hours yesterday, probably because it was a very dull day. So if we come back out of that, we can then have a look at the battery. So that's on the bottom left, and we can see the battery is currently charging because those arrows are pointing into the battery at 2.2 kilowatts. So if we click on that, there's no devices. <laughs> I should have known that. There's, there's no actual settings with the battery because the battery is a totally independent piece of kit. So all that it'll do with the battery is it'll show you if that battery is either charging or discharging. If we move up to the EV charger, this will then show us what the, the charger has been doing and what mode that that charger is set to. So you can see the charging mode, fast, eco, eco plus or stop. So if we change that to fast mode, that will not only change what we see here but it'll change the mode on the zappy itself it's just clicked on behind me to fast mode so that means that if your car's plugged in and you notice that there's loads of surplus solar you could change that mode to eco plus mode and then that would only charge up from surplus solar power we can change the modes we can then scroll down to boost so we can do a manual boost a smart boost a scheduled boost ah, and we can see here that the customer has got uh, four hours so at half past midnight turns on every day of the week for four hours and that'll be because from half 12 till half four there'll be a reduced energy tariff um, to charge the car so that's really cool but you can change all that within this app you can change it on the zappy as well if you'd prefer if we then come out of that 
we can then click on the green at 100% in the middle and that'll give us an overall of how this home has been performing. So we're still in the Today tab. We can see that the consumption in total has been 31.7 kilowatt hours. The generation has been 10.4 kilowatt hours. So in total today, that this home has been 33% green. Obviously with how this system's performing at the minute, I would expect that to increase and increase during the day because more solar power has been produced and uh, the battery is charging up. So that'll push that consumption from the solar into the evening because the battery is able to discharge its power. A lot of this will be the early hours consumption of 29 kilowatt hours, whatever it was. But yeah, so that's looking good. 33% green level. We've then got imported 21.3 kilowatt hours, consumed generation 10.4, and exported generation zero. So that's the important one for me. We've not wasted any power and send it back to the grid. We've then got a graph towards the bottom here, performance history, how much we've imported, how much we've exported and how much we've consumed and how they overlay each other. And then at the bottom, we've got how many kilowatt hours the home has consumed. So 31.7, basically everything. Uh, the Zappi hasn't charged up. So this customer hasn't charged the car up. It's unplugged because we're stood exactly where the car would be. And then we can change that to look at any other day. So yesterday we'll have a quick look. So there we go. So you can see we only had a poor generation at yesterday at 4.2 kilowatt hours, but all of that information is put on there. So that day yesterday was only 12% green. And we can see there on the graphs how that's uh, been displayed. So that is the Mind G app. That home screen for me is, is one of the best home screens on any app because it shows you instantly what everything's doing. If you had a second Zappi, it would show you a second Zappi symbol there. If you had an Eddy to heat hot water, it would show you the Eddy there. Everything is there on that screen. And it's very easy to quickly see how your home is performing. But yeah, it's a great app. So that's how we've altered this already installed seven kilowatt EV charger. And it goes to show that you don't want to choose a charger that is just right for you at that time. You want to try and choose a charger that can be adapted to give you flexibility in the future. I'm sure this customer at the time of fitting the original solar PV system didn't realize that he was going to have a second system and even a Tesla Powerwall. But what he did know was that choosing the Mindy Zappi would give him that flexibility. And that's what he's got now. Through the MyNG app, the customer can monitor what the battery is doing, what the solar is doing, uh, and what the grid is doing. Um, so even if they were to add another solar PV system on down the bottom of the garden or whatever, then the Zappi has got the functionality there to monitor all of that. This is why the Zappi is our favorite charger. Um, but I hope you've liked this video. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments, get in touch. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, like, and set the little notification bell on our YouTube channel. And we'll catch you on the next video. And don't forget to watch part one and part two of this video. Thanks very much.